I think it's important to have third parties because um, even though some may say that they're taking away from the main parties, I think it's important that people don't try to align their beliefs too broadly with a larger party and where they can have their voices heard on issues which they care about without compromising other um, values of other beliefs or on other issues. What the third party brings is kind of a collaboration of their ideas, which I kind of like better. Well, I spent many years in Washington getting things done in the consumer, environmental, worker, safety, free information areas. What made this possible was the Electoral College, where you can win the popular vote, as Gore did, and lose the Electoral College. What other country would allow that? Can you talk a little bit about Ross Perot? No. Can't talk about it. I think he cost me the election. I don't like him. Because the Democrats thought that uh, the Green Party would uh, uh, take away votes. Imagine that, as if we don't have an equal right to run for election. Well, at the national level, it, it has a nice ring to it because uh, about a third of the voters register independent. Uh, but uh, apart from Ross Perot and all the votes he got in 1992, 19 million, uh, even that doesn't get you over the ballot access obstruction uh, machinery in the various states uh, or the mindset of voters at the presidential level who say, well, I mean, uh, I really like this independent candidate, but that candidate's not going to get any electoral votes. Perot got 19 million votes, he didn't get one electoral college vote. The role of money began to uh, entice the Democratic Party big time, commercial money, and so they, they, they were less interested in getting legislation through or getting regulatory safety standards through. So either I was going to go to Monterey and watch the whales, or I was going to go into the electoral system, try to get the two parties' attention that way and give more uh, choice to more voters. First, they got to reform the uh, ballot laws, because if you don't get on the ballot, you can't get the first base. Uh, unlike all other Western countries, it's harder to get uh, third-party candidates on the ballot in the various states, uh, and harder for voters to vote without obstruction in the various states than any other country in the world. The United States is the most difficult of all. Well, it starts out in, in elementary school and uh, high school. I just like, I actually, I just feel like third parties are insignificant. Uh, students are discouraged because they're not taught that there are more than two choices, Democrat, Republican. And in some gerrymandered states, there's only one choice, either Democrat or Republican for all practical purposes. Uh, and so they grow up thinking, and Scholastic Magazine helps this, uh, that there aren't any other choices. And so they are very vulnerable to the least worst approach. Well, I don't like the Republicans, but uh, the Democrats aren't quite as bad or the, uh, vice versa. And that develops into a, a very, very limited, dead-end choice for voters. I don't think an independent candidate can win. The idea of, of running and, and, uh, and asking people to come around me with the sole purpose of being a spoiler is not something I could go out in good faith to, to donors and to, and to workers and voters and say, hey, come, come help me uh, stop this candidate or that candidate. Uh, there is a real shortage of candidates. Uh, the, the Green Party, when I was running in 2000 and 2004, 
uh, never had more than 250 or 300 local candidates uh, for local office, and there are two and a half million local offices, city council, uh, zoning, uh, uh, board of education, and that is a, a big and little uh, noticed problem with third parties, that if they don't have a lot of local candidates, they can't really build the party out from the bottom up to the state level, up to the federal level. When that happens, um, the two parties dialing for the same commercial campaign dollars become more and more alike and they take more issues off the table, like a living wage, like full Medicare for all, like real law enforcement against corporate crime, like doing something about the corporate tax system, uh, and uh, it destroys democracy. I think there are a number of enlightened billionaires who looked at the 2016 election and basically said, you know, if a failed gambling czar who couldn't tell the truth has become president, what about us, they might say. So I, I think uh, uh, the days of a real tight two-party duopoly are going to be numbered. Well, I think you look at Western Europe and Canada, they have a much better social safety net. <clears throat> they had full Medicare for all, for example. They have better pensions, better public transit, better parks maintained. They have four to seven weeks paid vacation in, in these countries. Uh, they have a higher minimum wage uh, in these countries. Uh, you say, how did they get these? Well, they got them because they had a multi-party system. And so a small party uh, had leverage over the two major parties in these coalition party systems, and they were way ahead of us. I think the reason why the two major parties are antagonistic to third party competition is money. That is, uh, they've locked themselves in in raising a certain amount of commercial dollars around what they're going to do on energy, what they're not going to do on health care, how they're going to block minimum wage, uh, and as a result, they don't uh, strategically think hey, you know, if this third party has a lot of popularity in terms of its agenda, why not take the agenda and get more votes and get more voters uh, involved? You, you cannot have democracy without having competitive elections to give people real choices, not different labels of choices. It, it destroys democracy.